Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Miss Fit One. But today's guest is someone that I have been Looking forward to speaking with for such a long time now. This has been in the works a minute. Um, the one and only Dr. Brooks Grio. Did I say it right? You did. You got it. All right on the money. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, for those of you who do not know this amazing woman, um, I'm so happy I can introduce you. Okay. You're welcome. She is a widely acclaimed leadership expert, speaker, and author. And she is the founder of, check this out, best name ever. The S-Y-N-C Worldwide, which which stands for Seek Your Natural Calling. Come on, Dr. Lisa. Come on. Talk to us about that. So, you know, it was interesting because um, I kept thinking, like, what kind of, what do I want to call my business? So, you know, I could have, like, said, yeah, use my own name. But I was thinking something more. And I think about all of us. We all have that something. We all have strengths. We all have gifts, talents, treasures that natural thing that we have. So I started playing around and, you know, so SYNC, S-Y-N-C came up, SYNC, and I said, SYNC, your natural calling. So that's how the name was born. So, yeah. Bam. I mean, and, it's, <laughs> and listen, do you say, what do you do? No, baby, my name is SYNC, your natural calling. I right. help you. That's right. <laughs> And that's it, you know, is to, for all of us to find like, what's our natural calling? What's that thing that we get immersed in and we look up and it's five hours later and like, whoa. So it's just kind of like, you know, where do you get that? Like, what's that, your flow? So right. if you're a runner, if, you know, if you, because runners get that runner high where they're like running and they, may, they start out running five miles and the next thing I know, they've run 15 so it's that flow, that thing that you, you know, you could do for hours. And that is your natural calling. I would say, what would you do even if you didn't get paid, right? Because right. something you love so much. And, yeah. and I love that because, you know, right now, people listening right now still have a hard time moving toward that, right? Yeah. But yeah. you help people get over it. You help them with their business development. You are an expert, literally, in your field of, I mean, you you not only have done such amazing things personally, right? But on a professional level, you're doing things, you're playing where, where the big boys play. <laughs> Does that make sense? It you know, it does. And so first of all, thank you for, for the compliment. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know what it is? And I didn't find what my natural calling was um, for a long, long time. You know, and it's like, there's always this longing in like in my heart, in my, like in my gut that like, okay, what do I, what is it that I really want to do? What do I want to do when I grow up? And mm -hmm. so I had been in jobs and yeah, you know, you made money, you paid the bills and you, you know, it was good but it really didn't fulfill you at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, and so I had been doing other things and I was just like, wow, I love doing this. I love doing this. And finally I thought, can I make money doing this? Could I make a living doing this? And, and the answer was, well, yeah, but even though the answer was yes, I didn't pull the plug then because I was still too scared, right? We get tethered to a job with a, you know, with, okay, I know I'm going to have a consistent paycheck. Yes. And that's what holds us back so often for taking, you know, taking that leap and doing the work that we love. 
I will tell you this. I read a book oh, probably about 25 years ago, right? And it was called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to read this. So I read it, but I, but I still didn't take the leap there. I read it and I was like, okay, okay, okay. Because I wasn't, I guess I really wasn't quite ready to do it. So no. I finally, I did. You, yeah. you finally took the leap. Now, how long was it from that book? So that people <laughs> can know that it's a real thing and it's not just them because we all have this desire, right? Because we've heard that a, a million times. If you do what you love, you'll never work another day. I've, right. I, I tell my kids that all the time. Do what you're passionate about. The money will flow. I didn't know there was a little a book on it, but okay. So how long did it take you? 15 years. <laughs> you yeah. know, bravo. Some, yeah. some people years. has never done it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's interesting. I know that too. Um, I am. Um, Interestingly enough, I always said that I never wanted to die with the dream still inside of me, you know, because I saw my mom, you know, my mom died with it. I felt like she still had the dream inside of her to do. My mom was such an incredibly creative person. I always said that she was ahead of her time. And because she was ahead of her time, I, I just think, you know, for women back then, they didn't allow them or it wasn't proper for women to go out and do certain things, right, in, in, in the business world. So I always felt like my mom still had so much in her that she didn't get a chance to do. And uh, I wanted to honor her by ensuring that what I was called to do, what were those gifts, talents, and treasures that I had, that I started to use them. But like I said, it took me 15 years after I read the book to finally do it, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. And it's, Again, it's that what comes out of the heart when you feel that, you know that you're on that right path when you're doing it and you get that gratification like inside of you. So which is which is so powerful on so many levels because we do we all have that. Like I I still am that person and I teach on this, right? I, I, I teach <laughs> on on living your best life, but I focus it on wellness, right? So my my whole platform is to live fit. I mean, focus, intentional, and transforming. And I think that once I was able to break through that ceiling for my well-being, then I was like, oh my gosh. But like you said, it took such a long time. A long time. <laughs> You know, and, and so that's true, too, because I didn't necessarily believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could do it. I mean, I'm just going to put it all out here. I didn't necessarily even believe that I could do it. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, when I was, gosh, I was like 19 years old, and I was taking a summer class at school, and, and it was a writing class. And, and so I was a finance major. So good with numbers, good with in, in that world, but I had to fulfill a writing requirement. So I was writing. Um, and wrote a paper. My professor comes back, and this is when they would like give you papers back, and you know, in yeah, hand. The good old days, yeah, right, the good old days. So he came, got to me, took my paper, put it down on the desktop, and was like, bam. He goes, you know, you're really not a good writer. It's a good thing you're a finance major. Well, he said this out loud, so other the other class could the rest of the class could hear it. I was a devastated, embarrassed, and any adjective you want to add to that. So I just took like a big gulp and I'm like, okay, so I'm not a good writer. So I just kind of internalized it, didn't challenge it, just said, huh, I'm not a good writer. Somebody in a position of authority told me that. So here's the thing. For 20 years, though, I wouldn't pursue anything, whether it was a job, whether it was any, any, anything that had to do with writing, because in my mind, I was not a good writer because this man told me that. So the moral to that is, though, never allow someone else's opinion mean more to you than your own. So 20 years out of my life, I didn't pursue graduate school. I didn't pursue jobs where there was a lot of writing involved. I didn't do it because, I, A, I was afraid to fail. And B, right, someone told me that I wasn't a good writer. So Oh, my God. And you are yeah. an Let's add that up there. Let's let let the people know that uh, you are an author. So to hear that story mm -hmm. gives me goosebumps because 
you know, it's very true. And as women, we have to learn to listen to ourselves, have the confidence in ourselves, which is hard because yeah. the outside world has no problem telling you what you can't do. Girl, all day long. And I will tell you too, I mean, you know, also the social media does a job on us as well, right? You know, portraying this wonderful image of everything is happy, beautiful, and lovely, what it should be. And so if we're trying to live up to this ideal that actually doesn't exist, then we're always going to feel some kind of way about ourselves. And, you know, and so I, I would submit to that, that that became really true for me. And, you know, and then it wasn't until I had this great circle of friends, though, who were saying to me, it's like, like, how did you come to that conclusion? Why do you believe this? And so they were always questioning the things that I was holding in my head. And mm -hmm. it helped me reframe how I was looking at certain things or even the world. So moral to that is, make sure your tribe, your make tribe sure your is village, yes. make sure whatever it is that they, like, you know, that you have these people in your corner so they can remind you of who and what you really are. Seriously. That is facts because I had that happen on the opposite. So math, I remember I was embarrassed. They didn't say it out loud, but in the old days, they would pass your paperback. Like I'm, I'm a straight A student. I'm that one who wants to have all oh, A's. I want to be great. And they would pass your paperback and I would have a big F on the math thing, right? It's a big F, big red F. <laughs> Like, I mean, why did they use red all the time? Right? Red F, like, what? and they passing it back, passing it back. And I told my dad, and my dad is great at numbers. My daughter just graduated college. Well, just she's graduated college as a math major. Math like runs in our family. So when I wasn't good at it, it was devastating to me. And I would ask my dad like to help me. And he would yell because you don't know that. I'm like, no, I don't know it. So I always just said, I'm just not good at math. I'm going to stick with writing and English and history and all that. But math is not my thing. However, comma doc, when it's a sale, 10% off of something, I'm like, oh, I know what that is. If you with money for me, I got it. Okay. It's, it. But it was in my mind because someone of authority said that you're not good at it so I love the fact that yeah. you took that that external nonsense from somebody who does not even matter like what are they doing now do you know you have no idea what they're doing now and based it upon your support group which is so important to have a tribe I I I I, I truly believe in it because they're the ones that's going to be honest with you. Truly, truly. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're also the ones, I mean, so yes, they, they pick you back up, but they're also the ones who will give it to you right between the eyes. It's like, okay, when you miss the mark, they'll be like, yeah, okay, girl, you missed that. And he, you know, and so they're not, you know, they're not afraid to come at you and to make sure, but you know, it's out of a, it's a place of love. Right. Love. So, Absolutely. You know, and, and so it's so funny because I, um, uh, I also, my husband is like my best coach because he's the one person that'll be like, okay, right now, let's, let's look at it differently. This is where you could have done something a little bit better and you would have gotten this result. So, and, and then my village, my tribe, they do the same thing. But, you know, one of the other things that I also wanted to impress upon um, is that is the ability to ask and to ask for what you want. I mean, that's one of those areas that I didn't realize, and again, until later in life about asking for things, you know, you grow up uh, with, you know, these messages, right? You get these messages, these early scripts from your parents or your grandparents or some significant other adult in your life, uh, you know, things like, you know, you shouldn't do this, you know, go to school and keep your head down and just get good grades, go to work, get a good job, just do good work and you'll get promoted, right? And things will happen for you. So. Now, those early messages in those early scripts, they were designed or they were told to us by, you know, the adults in our life then, but they were designed to keep us, to keep us safe, you know, to keep us, you know, in a place where we could, we could, you know, advance. Now, but unfortunately, what we do is we still hold on to those scripts at 35, at 40 years old, at 50, because mama told us or grandmama told us or granddaddy or somebody told us these messages and we revere them, right? So they couldn't be wrong, 
Well, they, they can't weren't. Be. They're not wrong, but those messages were good to maybe time you were about 18 or 20. And then you have to replace it with something new. So those scripts that they told you, absolutely true to a point. But what we don't do is we don't examine them and say, hey, is this still true now? Is this still work for me now? And I will tell you, if you're in a workplace and you're not asking for things, because we got that message going up, don't ask for anything because you don't want to be seen dot, 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 fill in the blank. So if we're not asking for those promotions, if we're not asking for more money when we're negotiating our salaries, we're not going to get it. But the reason we don't ask is because it was those early scripts, right? It's holding us back. So that's don't why I said, don't right, don't the vote. vote, right, yeah. exactly. So I'm here to say, you know what, examine those old messages and scripts. Right. All I'm saying is examine them because it's a different context now than perhaps when they were told to us. But you have to ask. I promise you all day long. Ask for what you want. Now, that's a harder thing for us to do. Right. Because we're like, oh, I couldn't ask for that. I couldn't do that. And I'm like, well, why, why not? Why not? You're going to get two answers. Yes. OK. Or no. And if yeah. you, the answer is no, you are still where you are right now. So you don't lose anything. Right. right. If you say yes, if the answer could be yes, then you get what you were asking for. Um, yeah, I make it sound simple, right? Yeah, it, so I, know I was just about me. to say that. I was just about to say that. It sounds really simple. Sounds really simple. And it's just like, you're like, well, of course. Let me tell you something. That is like one of the hardest things to, for us to do. Because we have like this self-editing voice in the back of our head saying, da 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 A monkey brain, yeah. Yes. And it's just like, so we don't ask. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, and this is especially for women. Um, and the research bears this out, is at you know, 21, 22 years old, young girl, young man, I ran out of college, same major, going for the same job. Now, the young man will say, oh, yeah, I'm excited to work here. But you know, I was doing some research and I really would like $10,000 more. Okay. That comes back, you know, they negotiate back and forth, but they know so that he maybe doesn't get the 10, he gets seven. Young woman says, thank you so much. When do I start? Opportunity. Yes. So she doesn't ask for anything. Now that's not, you know what, even that's not even the issue so much. What happens is over the course of 40 years, because, you know, and even now, the retirement age is, is being pushed back. So maybe it's over the course of 50 years. You compound that interest on that first 7,000. Let me do the quick, I'll do the quick math for you. Do it's it for the girl. $1.5 million that that woman will have lost out by not asking that simple question at 22. So did y'all get that? Everybody, I want you to write it down and then <laughs> highlight it. Ask for what you want. you want. And so I'm going to go back to what you said, because it's like, okay, it's not that simple. You're right. But you know what it is? It is a muscle, Elizabeth. It's a muscle. And the more we do it, okay, girl, I'm talking to the right person. Right? Talk because, to me. Okay. So Miss Fit. So it's a muscle. The more you work out that muscle, the stronger it gets, right? Absolutely. So asking is the same thing. The more yep. you start asking, so start small, right? Start small, ask for something, ask for things you don't even care about what the outcome is, but right. just get in the habit of asking. And so by the time you were ready for that big ask, you know, you still may have a little bit of butterflies, but it's not going to be so overwhelming that you don't ask for it. Right. I, yeah. I love that. And you know, what's so, so true is that examine the old script. Yeah. Because that's the same thing we talk about. I, I talk about with my clients in wellness, right? So for instance, say the fried chicken. So, right? My mama been having, we've been having fried chicken. My grandma been doing fried chickens every Sunday. We have ham hocks, greens, and all this. Now, are you saying if I question this, if I, I'm saying if these fried chicken is bad, you're saying my mama was wrong, my mama grandma was wrong, my great grandma was wrong, my whole so it's hard. And that's not that they were wrong. That was what was working at that time with the information they had. So you have to be able to say, 
that the cultural norms mm -hmm. is what you have to be able to withstand. Are you gonna be are you gonna be too scared to ask in that meeting for that extra? Are you gonna be too scared? Or are you gonna sit back because it's not the cultural norm for a woman to ask for more? Same thing, right? Girl, all day long. All day long. So we have to re-examine those early scripts, those early messages. And, and you know, we generally don't. We no. you know we just like go on except this is the way it is it's going to be, and and again so it's like you know it might have been back then so let's take a look at it and replace it with new ones right correct so. right it's not like you said they're not wrong it was just what they did at that time exactly but now we have more information we have more uh, research we have th more things that we can pull from. And we have to be willing to walk away from the script. That's the hard part. Well, it is. It absolutely is. Because sometimes when we walk away from it, it's like, you know, these are people that we revered who told us, right? right? So we're like, oh, no, no, no. Grandmama told me this. And I hear, I hear 55, 60 year old women say, no, no, my grandmama said this. And I'm like, honey, you're right. Grandmama did say that. And we love grandmama. However, what was the context in which she said it? Right, and, and World War are, II. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe there are nuggets that we can pull out, but in its entirety, it no, it's no longer working for you. Right. So, and sometimes that's hard because, you know, we revere our elders. And, you know, and so to take that apart, but we have to, otherwise we're going to get, we're going to get stuck. And I want to go back to some, I want to go back to something that I said too about asking. So what happens if the answer is no, Right. And that's okay, because again, you haven't lost anything. You're still right where you were if you hadn't asked at all. However, what you did gain, you gain the satisfaction of asking because you know your value and you know your worth. Now, they know your value. They know that you know your value. So they were like, okay, we can't pull one over hey, on people, her. Yeah, we can't keep playing with her. Yes. <laughs> right. So they will look at you differently. Right. right, right. Now, let me ask you this for everybody who is is listening today. Can you give us like three tips on really you, you, you've you given us a lot of tips. We got some good nuggets. But for that person who is afraid, like you said, you know, who who is afraid to seek the things that, you know, their natural calling. Right. Can you give them a little nudge or a little direction to to move towards? So yeah, so I, I I can because I was I was that person too, and so I knew. I mean, here's the thing. So talk to your inner circle. Talk to five people, and it can be a combination of friends and relatives. Talk to five people, but right? I want you to talk to five people and ask them what they see as the area where you have expertise and the things that you do well, right? So ask them, like, where do you see me having expertise and where do you see the things that I do really, really well? So, and then, because sometimes we can't see them ourselves, right? Sometimes we just don't see it for ourselves. Because it's so it's Right, not exactly. And we sometimes assume that everybody has that. I was like, well, I'm no different because, you know, someone so has it. Yeah, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> I, I think, you know, we just, but, but we get into that, that mindset sometimes. So ask them what they see. And they're really clear because they see you all the time. And they're like, it's like they'll, they'll and, and they'll give you examples. Yeah, you do this really well. And as a matter of fact, here was this time when you did this thing. So ask five people and they will tell you. And then, and then something you mentioned too, Elizabeth, about intentionality, being intentional, right? And you said that was the I in the fit. Mm -hmm. Be really intentional. Pay attention to where you get your joy from. And I think that is really, really important. Like what gives you joy? What makes you just smile all day long? What is that thing? Pay attention to that because that's where your passion, your purpose is. And, and again, I don't want to sound like, you know, like some guru here, but those are the things that, that came to mind for me is, well, what is my 
purpose? Where does, where does my joy come from? Yeah. And so for me, my joy came from helping women really see their value and, and to excel. So that for me was where my joy came from. In the midst of doing other jobs and the other things that were, you know, paying the bills for me, where my biggest joy came from is maybe I was mentoring somebody and it helped them. So I, I noticed that. I was like, huh, okay, interesting. And so then I started like doing more of it. And then I found out, oh, you know what? This, can I make a living doing this? Right? And so one thing led to another, led to another. And I will tell you, you know what? Again, being intentional, there are no coincidences in life, right? Absolutely. You, if you pay attention, you will see the beauty unfold for you. So um, the intentionality piece is big. Pay attention to where your joy comes from. I right? love that. Yeah. I do because it's it's very true. Um, it. Listen, I'm considered a guru. I am a wellness expert. I'm going to say it. I, I don't care. I said it. This is it's true. If we are not following our passion, we will never ever get to feel that joy mm -hmm. at all times, right? So it's true. Now that script that the old people said, that's true. Stick with that. You know, yeah. find something that you enjoy and you will never work another day in your life. That's that's a good old script that you can stick to. You know, and that's so true. And it's so funny because, you know, um, people say, well, you know, like, what were you, what are you going to do when, when, you know, in retirement? And I'm like, retirement, I'll never retire. I'll be working until I'm 105. And they're like, <laughs> what? And I said, why would I retire? You know, and I like, that's not even on the radar at the moment anyway. But why would I retire when I'm doing the work that I love? Right. Exactly. I might do, I might dial it back in terms of the intensity or the amount of hours, but I would always do, be doing something like this. You know what I mean? So, so that's really what, what becomes important. And like you said, if you do with something that you love doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Never. Right? Uh, you never will. You know, and we, we got to talk about your book um, <laughs> and how we can get it because your book is, um, let me see if I can remember the name of it. Um, Don't Advocate the Throne. Yeah. Um, is that it? That's it. Say it, say it, say it again. Yes. So, um, so, hey, I can just show it to you. So this is what it looks like. Don't okay. advocate the throne. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting because the, the title is funny because I, I finished writing the book. And, I, and, and so they, my editor said to me, you know, she was like, what are you going to call it? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> and we just busted out laughing. And she goes, you know, she, as she was editing and, and making some corrections for me, she goes, you know, you always keep saying this phrase, don't advocate the throne. I'm like, yeah, don't give away your power. And she goes, bingo, title for the book. And I'm like, absolutely. Because, um, again, I see us sitting on our thrones, you know, because we were put here for a reason. So stop giving your power away. Stop it. I mean, we all have power, Elizabeth. We all do. Yes. It's, and I love, a little, I, I love what Alice Walker said. She said, the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. And she's so true about that. We think of power as lots of money, you know, billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. power, right? <laughs> or we think of, well, you know, I'm the CEO of a company. We think that's power. Now, that's I will true. tell you, you know what? So that might be true, but there's not just two dimensions of power. There right. are actually seven dimensions of power. And in those seven dimensions, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk about three of them because all of us possess at least these three. And the first one is expertise. Right. So all of us are experts in something. You know, you are a fitness expert, bar none. Right. And, and own it. So own your own your expertise. So expertise. And all of us have expertise in some area. Mm -hmm. And we think about what is it for some people? It's their, you know, their technology. They are the person like when you get a new phone, there's certain people I'll give my phone to and say, here, you know, it's just like do this for me. Right. So there's that there are some people who are like those experts you come to with investment. You know, they know how to invest money. They know what to do with it all day long, right? So where is your area of expertise? And here's the thing. What do your friends and family come to you for, right? What do they come to you for? That will tell you what your area of, area of expertise is, right? I love it. And how can we get the book? Because I definitely need that in my life. So you can get the book. Um, go to my website, 
And so the website is syncworldwide.com. <laughs> thinkworldwide.com. And yeah. listen. The great thing about that too is I can also autograph for, you, for people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I would like an autograph. <laughs> <Please. laughs> yeah, but it's about understanding our power, right? Not giving away our power. And it's understanding, you know, our purpose and where our joy comes from. And, and listen, this woman is just not speaking to be speaking. She is... Um, you were selected as one of the 25 most influential Black women in business. Right. So th when I say, you guys, I was looking so forward to this interview because like we all have our power. And I think the biggest part of it is, is knowing your strengths and knowing your weaknesses and know who to surround yourself with. Am, right? Right. All day long and get get away from those toxic people. Adios, amigos. <laughs> Just say bye, right? And you don't need to um, give them any explanation. It, you know, because I always say this, you are the architect of your life. You build the life that you desire. Mm -hmm. And listen, I am totally in awe with you. I am so proud of you. I mean, I look at all the things J.P. Morgan and Chase is where he used to um, to to go and talk to the people. And we, my husband is in finance, and so that's what he does. And we've been to New York, the Manhattan for that. A lot of times we go up there, but to see you in this position, it just makes my heart happy. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I really appreciate that. We really appreciate you being on today. Um, so before I wrap it up, is it any last word you want to tell the people? Start asking for what you want. You have not because you ask not. Whoop! I'm gonna I'm, listen. I'm gonna add on that, like my daddy say, a, a closed closed mouth don't get fed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so until next time you guys live fit i hope you enjoyed this episode of miss fit one lifestyles listen when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled overwhelmed and overstressed life and you're ready to live the fullest richest and healthiest life by gaining more confidence more energy and more clarity living in your best self you know what to do right go ahead go to my website misfit1.com sign up for our online courses creating healthy habit so that you too can live fit focus move with intention and transform your life